Sarah and Phil, co-directors of the found footage phenomenon, which is going to be world premiering this afternoon at Fright Fest. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, thanks for having us. Have you guys been to Fright Fest before? I have, yes. Uh, five years ago, my film Cruel Summer world premiered here, and it was at Shepherd's Bush. Of course. So that weird year. Yep. The, the strange limbo. Yeah. It was, yes. <laughs> So you, you're kind of familiar with the, the crowd and how it works. I am indeed, yes, else. they're an amazing audience. And yes, yeah, it's a great festival and honoured to be back with Sarah. And Sarah, you've been to Fright Fest before? Yeah, I've years? been around. It's quite, it's such a, it's such a fun event. You know, loads of people that you see kind of once a year and then they all, you always meet them back here again. Yeah, it's like, so it's, yeah, seeing like family and friends. Yeah. <laughs> especially this year has been a bit weird, obviously, with the whole, the whole COVID scenario. So there's a lot of people not here, but there's also a lot of brand new faces. So it's a kind of, it's a kind of weird one. Um, tell us about your backgrounds, first of all. Over to you, Phil. Yeah, so uh, my background is Blu-ray production. So that's where Sarah and I actually met, is through Blu-ray production. So it's through 101 Films. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the day job is helping to produce Blu-rays. But from that, I started doing camera work on really dodgy films for the asylum <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, uh, the American <laughs> company Great films. oh yeah the best shock busters you've ever seen <laughs> and so I got experience through that and then living how sets run and then that led to cruel summer mm -hmm. uh, that then led to an understanding of the distribution side of things and so I've kind of become a jack of all trades so I've gone from filmmaker to distributor and now back to filmmaker and Sarah yeah, that's a good point because, I mean, this is my first film, so mm. it's like all new to me, but uh, I used, I would just film and edit stuff for DVD labels and stuff, so mm. it's quite nice to know all angles of it, if you know what I mean, so we sort of know distribution side, but we also yeah. know the production with filming, particularly with documentaries, like, yes. but you, you know, fiction as well, but, yeah. Because <laughs> you've yeah. done many, many of these sort of things, don't you? Yeah, you should, you're feeling the other side of the usually camera, you're, so... You're there. <laughs> yep. And because I've done a lot, a lot of commentary, well, a bunch of commentaries with you, we did um, one with Sean Hogan, yeah. didn't we, for Spookies. Oh, that was fun. And, <laughs> and me and Jake West doing... Um, prom Night. Prom Night. So, yeah, it's, but how does it feel to be on the other side of the camera? Uh, not great, to be honest. <laughs> really? Um, look, there's a reason I... I like part. being on the other side of the camera because you can control it, I guess. When you're in, it's very like but it's it's super fun and it's sort of fan footagey breaking the fourth wall yeah it's kind of yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not in the film though no God. Exactly. <laughs> so this particular project how did it come out whose idea was it what was the genesis how yeah well i was working on the blu-ray of lake mungo oh so masterpiece yeah i was masterpiece. getting the the extras put together for that and sarah reached out saying i really want to make a found footage like documentary can we can we do it for the blu-ray and We'd already filmed a bunch of stuff for it, so it was like, mm, don't really have much space for that. But I think that's a brilliant idea. Let's do it long form, think bigger. And so it was like, yes. Yeah, I literally wanted to do this documentary for like 10 years, but you kind of have to wait for the right moment because people, you know, you don't just give you money to make a documentary randomly. So um, that, I thought that was the right moment. And he was like, just really enthusiastic about it. And obviously, you know loads about fan footage too. So it's yes. a good combination. Yeah, for me, it's like um, this this generation's slasher film. It's, mm. a, it's a, like a genre that critics don't like it for the most part. Audiences yeah, really was, engage with it. I was going to say that. Mm. I mean, yeah. I, I do really, really like found footage films, but there was a few years at Fryfest where we'd get sent, I, I can't even count countless, a lot amount, of shit. countless yeah. from every single yep. country. And when they work, they work amazingly, as you illustrate in, in the film. And when they don't, they're a disaster, aren't yep. they? It's just a bloke yep. in the woods yep. with his mates, because you know, it's cheap to film, mm -hmm. etc., etc. So it's the, all, all yeah. about the idea, isn't it? It's all with found footage. It's about having a great idea yeah. and then using, exploiting that medium to, to, to illustrate the, the, the plot. Or yeah, the thing is, it's sort of like about the genesis of the of fan footage and, and why it's so important as a genre. It's like you can't really say, oh, I love fan footage movies because it's, it's a bit like saying I love all horror films. You know, it's kind mm -hmm. of, it's really broad. So mm -hmm. you have to just be more like, I love what, like, what the fan footage sort of movement 
was, I guess, mm. if you think about it like that. Yeah, and it is a blessing and a curse, isn't it? I mean, it is cheap, so it's great for talented filmmakers who don't have money, but then it, the curse is it's useful for not as talented filmmakers with no money. So you get this wave of product and yeah, ten percent of it is worthwhile, but then you gotta shift through all that ninety percent of not so great content. But your film is, is fantastic. I mean, both myself and Alan, you, you Sarah, you kindly sent us the, the rough cut or the early cut of the film. We both thought it was terrific. Um, content wise, how did you work out how what to include, what not to include? Well, uh, the thing with fan footage is it really comes in sort of stages where, because it really tracks technology. So when mm -hmm. technology changes, you get like a new wave of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like so with VHS, you had like the Blair Witch Project and stuff. Um, that was sort of pioneering, but then you didn't really get a whole load after that until Paranormal Activity and you had like CCTV mm -hmm. cameras and, mm -hmm. and things went a bit more digital. So that we sort of included the steps so it's sort of like a, a, a learning experience rather than, because there's a lot of really great fan footage films that we just sort of didn't feature because yeah. you can't include everything, but also you have to include the ones that make sense. Yeah, the landmarks. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you know, the Genesis, which arguably might be Cannibal Holocaust. Yeah, you, you cover Cannibal Holocaust. Yeah. And it's, obviously it is. It, mm -hmm. it is a fan footage film, isn't it? But then the more lesser established things like the McPherson tape, which really, I feel, yeah, is I mean, that solidified the, the whole thing. I've a lot of stuff through watching it, as the audience will this afternoon and, and in the future. There's some great stuff there that you're like, wow. The McPherson tape is amazing because it came out in 1989, which is like a whole decade before Blair Witch Project. But not loads of people saw it, and the people who did see it literally thought it was a, a real UFO video. Yeah, yeah. You know, like before YouTube, they'd show their friends and be like, "We've met it's loads real, of people who are like, real, yeah. I actually thought that was real when I was a kid." And it's, it, it, yeah. So it's interesting if because that, like, being the whole ten years before, you're like, "Oh wow, I didn't really realize that was even in the genesis of film footage," but it mm. is. Mm. Was there much that you shot or would love to have included that you had to kind of edit out? Were you quite brutal to make it yeah. so it wasn't <laughs> a two and a half hour or two hour doc? Yeah, well, we got so much footage, so yeah, we could have turned it into like a, an eight hour film at one point. It could have been a series, but it's like, no, we want to make a standalone documentary that is as lean as and concise yeah. as possible yeah we didn't really believe we, yeah we have to cut people long. out like there's interviewees the, that we've yeah, spoken with that aren't in the film mm. yeah sorry guys <laughs> yeah. but with, with uh, i think you're right i think the length is is absolutely perfect for it um because it is a very specific part of the genre whereas we had woodland stark and um uh, days bewitched which is three hours yeah. plus but that subject matter kind of lent it because it was when yeah, world, yeah like we that. really didn't want to go off on too many tangents so there's this whole like reality tv section of mm -hmm. sort of fan footage that we just couldn't cover you know films like my little eye and things like mm. that 2001 Gosh, yeah. but yeah. it's just because where they landed right after blair witch it doesn't it didn't make a huge load of sense to navigate off to that and then yeah. come back in with paranormal activity so we just yeah. Like, yeah. Didn't. we're doing stuff like the 70s horror as well where realism was a big thing so like texas chainsaw massacre and that wave of seventies, like grindhouse cinema, and how that mm. helped influence like this, the aesthetics. You could do a whole film just mm -hmm. on the influences before, like Blair Witch. So we, we you, you have to be quite brutal with the influences. I think we quickly yeah, just get to the point, wasn't we it? We quickly <laughs> get to quickly get to Blair Witch. I think you still only get to Blair Witch at, like h halfway through. Yeah, it's nearly <laughs> so hour, it's it? quite a lot of Genesis already. But if you were to make a film yourself, and not a documentary, an actual feature. Of a narrative feature would you make a film footage film or would you do something totally different i'd i would totally make a film footage film hey. <laughs> i'm trying to think cutting edge ways i'm thinking you have to think of a new way yeah that doorbell ring oh, yeah. <laughs> do a fan footage film <laughs> the the doorbell. Doorbell. <laughs> and obviously folks are seeing it here at fry fest for the first time this afternoon how are people going to be able to see the film that aren't because the tickets are just ridiculous. We, like, we can't find, we can't find any more tickets. For oh, people. well, there's Fright Fest Digital, right, next course, weekend. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, it's but playing the Fantastic Fest. It is, and then Citrus um, in October. Wow. Yeah. So and we, restrictions permitting, you'll be travelling with it. Hopefully. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and what we, about, I know you probably can't say, but distribution? Yeah, we can't really say right now. No, but, but we're in but a good place. Is, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. I mean, you'll be able to see it What's soon. What's the space? Yeah. Of it's, yes. it's, it's in the pipeline. And so sure. you've been working with Jane Giles on the big Scala documentary, haven't you, as well? So that's <laughs> coming. What else have you guys got coming up? Well, we are um, turning around with a few ideas for a, a follow-up documentary. So that's very early days at the moment. So however. early. Yeah. We don't even want to say anything else. <laughs> we will do <laughs> want to give someone else the idea and they'll do it. <laughs> okay. Yep. But I'm, I'm in the Thank process you. of producing a couple of films back home in, in Cardiff. One with... Uh, Chris Crow, who was here himself a few mm. years with Panic Button, mm. and another film called Black Mountain with a, an up and coming Welsh director who I'm excited about. Fantastic. And uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm making a film at the moment for Sir, for David Gregory at Sever End Films, the documentary. So, um, Woodlands Dark produced. That's where it came yeah. from. Woodlands Dark came from there. So um, that's not been announced either, but uh, it's nearly done. So that, that'll. Hopefully, coming out next year or something. Brilliant. Well, we wish you both well with that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for, for having, having us. us. Thank you. <laughs>